sometimes you hear the idea that the world outside of the monastery is the real world, and the world inside the monastery is somehow unreal. You know, the real struggles in life, the real challenges in life that are worthwhile, worth fighting for, are outside. But somehow the struggles you engage in here in the monastery are not. This is an idea that's proposed or put forth usually by people outside the monastery. And John Lee has a good response to that. He says, you look at the world. Its goodness isn't true. Its truth isn't good. If you want something true and good, you look for the Dharma. So it's not a question of real world versus unreal world. It's the world versus the Dharma. And the Dharma is genuine. When we talk about goodness, what makes life worth living, it's in the practice of the Dharma. And if you can find a place where everything is devoted to that practice, and you're not distracted, then you found something real. Because you look at the world. They talk about goodness. They talk about values. But you go through the different areas where you could, say, go to learn a living, go into politics. Just reading the other day that one of the main candidates for president next time around was a lawyer in the torture chambers of Guantanamo. And that was being rewarded. And the people who reported that kind of stuff, that that stuff was going on, they're in jail. You look in academia, people get ahead, not necessarily because the research is better, but they know how to promote it. And the same in business. It's not the case that the, the best products are the ones that get sold most. There are ins and outs and ways that you can manipulate the market. So as John Lee said, the goodness of the world isn't really true. And its truth isn't good. We chanted just now, the world is swept away, it does not endure. You have nothing of your own. All the stuff that you could amass in the world. And what does the world have to offer? Gain, loss, status, loss of status. Praise, criticism, pleasure, pain. Those things are not necessarily real. Gain can come from cheating. Status can come from cheating. Praise can come from anything. There are people who will praise horrible behavior and condemn good behavior. And pleasure is often entailed doing things that are going to have long-term pain. Is that what you want? Or do you want to look after the big issues inside? Because if you go into the quote-unquote real world, the real issues inside you don't get much space. You've been born, and you know you're going to get old if you live long enough. Then you're going to get sick, and you're going to die for sure. And what does the world teach you about that? The education we get in schools, does that prepare us for that? Not at all. They're preparing us to be good workers and good consumers. And then when we can't work anymore and can't consume anymore, they throw us away. They call us redundant people. In the meantime, not only do they offer you nothing in terms of what you need to know for dealing with aging, illness, and death, they can also get you to do things that are going to make it really difficult when aging comes, when illness comes, when death comes. Many times our attitudes are, there's nothing much you can do about that, so buy our stuff. They encourage our greed, encourage our anger, encourage our delusion, all of which are going to be really bad for us. Society is bad for your health, your mental health. And the real issues don't get addressed at all. So here at the monastery you have an opportunity to address the real issues. You can sit down and be with your mind. 
and it's not easy. When you squeeze meditation into your life outside, you're lucky if you can just sort of maintain your sanity, maintain a sense of balance. But with all the other things coming in, as with any multitasking, there are a lot of things that are going to get sloughed over. Parts of the mind that you don't want to look at, well, you don't have to look at. There are other things to fill your time. But when you're here, face to face with your body in the present moment, face to face with your mind in the present moment, things are going to come up. Parts of yourself that you don't like to see, but you're going to have to see them if you want to get past them. And here's the opportunity to see them. When you look at the breath, you're very close to looking at the mind. And we look at the breath to give ourselves a good foundation. So when we look in the mind and see things we don't like about the mind, we're not blown away. We try to develop a sense of ease, well-being, belonging here in the present moment. We develop virtue, we develop generosity, good habits inside, good habits in our relationship with people around us. So we have a sense of self-esteem. Then we do have some self-worth. So when things come up in the mind that challenge that self-image, we're not blown away. We have the confidence that we have enough goodness to deal with these things. So the real issues are here, as you're sitting face to face with the mind. And as John Lee says, when you start practicing, that's when you see your defilements. You can read about the practice and have all kinds of theories about how things should go in nice, ordered steps. But you find that the mind goes up and down as you actually look at it. Things seem to be settling down, and then greed comes in, lust comes in, anger comes in, fear, anxiety. And here's your chance to face them. It's like those heroes in vision quests. They're running away, running away, running away. What they feel is chasing them. And it's only when they turn around and face them, whatever it is that seems to be such a big danger in their lives, that they can actually live without fear, overcome it. And being outside, not practicing, is running away. Practicing is taking a stance. So even though the world gets swept away, you don't get swept away. It offers you no shelter. You're finding shelter for the mind. In fact, shelter is one of the words for nibbana. You see all these things that are not your own, but there are things that you can lay claim to, saying, this is what I really want to do. This is what I really want to accomplish. In other words, you take your sense of agency and you use it well to examine that last problem. The world is insatiable, insufficient, a slave to craving. The world is never going to give you enough. So why do you keep running after it? It's like eating potato chips. The more you eat, the more you want, but they never really satisfy you and they make you sick. The Buddha offers genuine health food for the mind, conviction in the power of your actions, he encourages persistence, i.e., learning to take delight in developing skillful qualities and abandoning unskillful ones, whether it means just watching them or actually actively undoing the unskillful ones, replacing with something more skillful. 
but as you feed on mindfulness, concentration, discernment, finding joy in all these things. You can find joy in this path. You look at the pleasures that the world has to offer, and you see that they're dangerous, either because they make you complacent or because sometimes it requires that you do underhanded things to gain them. So either you are creating bad karma or you're setting yourself up to create more bad karma. And then they say that they're real. They may be real, but they're not really for real. If you want something that's for real, you look to the Dharma. Because it's not only real, but it's also good. <laughs>